Would you like to cure your back pain without using drugs? Imagine you're one of the one third of the population who suffers from back pain or one of the 20% who goes to the GP to be prescribed medication for back pain that doesn't treat the cause. If that's you and you suffer from back pain, then you're not going to want to miss a moment of my interview with Peter Johnson, who has suffered from back pain and gone on to cure it without drugs and written a book about how he did it. Health Explorer Neil Fellows here to get healthy and fit and stay healthy and fit and do it in a way that's natural and unique to you. Please subscribe and hit the bell to get notified of all of our latest uploads. If you've been suffering from back pain, you know how restrictive that can be. You know how that can impact your life and stop you doing the things that you would really love to be doing. But imagine that there's a cure and that cure doesn't have to involve surgery and doesn't have to involve long-term drugs. Let me bring in Peter Johnson and if what he shares with you resonates with you, please hit the like button because that really helps the channel. So Peter, what kind of back pain did you have? I had lower back pain and I'd slipped five discs. That was L1 to L5. So it's right down the bottom, mm. the whole lot. Uh, so that was a back pain I actually had. And what kind of um, diagnosis did you have from, from, from the doctor? And the, uh, how did that pain affect how I mean, five discs? It's massive. I mean, how, how, what, what did that mean to you? What could you do? What couldn't you do? Yeah, it was hugely debilitating. It was they weren't mildly, gently bulging or anything. They were properly slipped. Uh, it racked me in complete pain. A good good idea of the of the um, of the, the bodily change was that my instead of my spine gently curving inwards, it bulged outwards, and uh, I was heavily twisted. So if I did there put a tie on uh, on a shirt and stood up. Uh, my tie hung to the left of my left knee. So I looked like a, a grandfather clock with a pendulum out of, uh, out of kilter. Um, and the actual pain was, uh, people talk about back pain. Firstly, I had pain down my, right through my groin legs and right down to my feet, particularly my left foot, uh, which was incredible. And uh, because I was so twisted, um, I had pain throughout the whole of my back, right across my shoulders. And because my tongue was now twisted, I also had uh, an aching tummy most of the time because everything was out of, out of shape. So I was really quite, me, quite badly misshapen. Um, I looked like an old man twisted and uh, it took a very long time to do anything. Um, the pain was just excruciating. Uh, the one thing I really dreaded if I got sit, uh, was sitting and I just about got comfortable so I wasn't in too much pain, uh, a sneeze was just just horrible. Um, and if I had two or three sneezes, it, it took me half an hour to recover uh, just from the pure shake of pain that I was in. It was horrible. And this is, this, I got some, some drugs with this, by the way. So this wasn't... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, an undrugged pain. <laughs> As someone who's suffered from back pain, I can relate to exactly what you're saying, especially the sneezes. Um, you literally gripping hold of furniture when <laughs> when when you go to sneeze. I remember um, the uh, the thing I think with with back pain as well that maybe. Um, people who don't suffer from back pain um, don't realize is how connected it is to so many different parts of your, your body because of the back obviously mm. being central but you if I'm right after you, you had your your back problem we'll, we'll talk about how you cured that in, in a minute but the thing that I find incredible about your story you know five discs um, out is that after you um, recovered from this you actually then walked the, the Himalayas. Tell, tell us a bit about how that came about and, and what you actually did. Well, what actually happened is that um, it took a long time to get properly recovered uh, uh, because it's not an overnight job. It does take a lot of discipline and everything else around it. But it, my world around me, everybody knew me as the person with back pain. So I was, my standard name became Peter, how's your back pain? Almost like one word, like my yeah. name. And I joined a charity as a trustee and nobody knew I'd had a back problem. And uh, uh, the 
event organizer for the the charity was uh, had a problem and was able unable to take a trek um and i got a phone call one weekend saying peter we think you're one of the fittest people we know is there any chance you can take a group of people uh to tibet and go to the base camp of the highest mountain there and uh, i said uh, yes <laughs> And then I put the phone down. And I, these nagging voices came shooting. Peter, you've got back pain. What happens if you let the group down? What happens if you have a problem on the mountainside? Because you remember to get off. Because uh, when you go into uh, Tibet, which is China-based, mm -hmm. uh, the ability to actually fly people out by helicopter is difficult. And also at the altitude we're going to, helicopters tend not to go that far up anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that's what actually happened. So uh, I successfully took... Um, no, there's 20, 27 of us went on this trek up to the base camp of the highest mountain in Tibet and we raised a decent sum of money and uh, that for me was the biggest, I didn't say much to anybody at all at the time but this is probably one of the biggest challenges I'd had both bodily but also uh, in my mind yeah. uh, and when I got back having achieved the um, the goal and I got to the base camp whereas many people didn't because of the altitude uh, it was re reassuring. It made me feel that I was um, back to uh, back to normal. I think yeah. that's a good way of putting it. So, what were the uh, you, you you got five discs that are damaged? What were the medical options that were available to you? What did the doctor talk to you about? Well, initially, I was on some painkillers. They're prescription painkillers, but I was certainly avoiding morphine because I know the extra both damage and the lightheadedness and the fact that you start to lose control of what's going on because uh, I'd seen people on morphine. Uh, so I was res restricting that heavily. Um, and we tried a, a few alternative therapies, things like chiropractic um, challenges. And I went, I went to see a physiotherapist who I knew, and he wouldn't even touch me. He said, this is so bad. He said, I'm a, he said this, this chap was 60. So he was a very pr well-practiced, experienced uh, physiotherapist. And a chiropractor after um, quite a range of, of sessions. Um, I, th I think I mentioned this in the book actually. I, there's a lot. There's a large mirror with a with a, a crosswork of of wires, so that you can see the body alignment. I looked in this mirror one. You know, happened to be looking at it one day, and I saw this old twisted grey haired man in there. And I thought, who the hell's that? Just happened to be wearing the same clothes I was wearing. And this is the this was the same day that the chiropractor said to me, said Peter, it's unlikely you'll ever walk properly again in your life. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm, I'm not very happy about that. Went back to the doctor, and now we would start and talk about fusing fusing vertebrae, maybe putting some steel rods in the base of my back. Mm -hmm. And I just thought this isn't isn't the sort of stuff I'm after at all. So, so uh, I know from your story that you didn't have the uh, the surgery, you didn't have steel rods put into your back. You actually no. cured this without drugs. So let's get into talking about that. How did you cure your back pain without drugs? Well, firstly, I did a huge amount of, res of research just to find out what I could do and what I couldn't do, yes. uh, and what, uh, what things actually helped. And I started to buy a lot of appliances is about the best description for the house. And I was starting to realize I was living almost restricted because if I went anywhere outside of the house, I couldn't cope. Mm. So I got foam rolls, special chair, um, a thing that was higher on the toilet, um, arm things to go up the stairs in the shower, there's a, a grip and, and everything was there. And I just thought this isn't the way I want to live at all. Mm. So I then did even more research and came across a pain clinic and they were specialised in management of pain. And at this point, whilst I was physically an unusual shape, um, because I was twisted and everything else, I was still racked in a huge amount of pain. Now, it'd take me a quarter of an hour to get out of a chair, crawl across the floor, get to mm -hmm. the door frame to, to physically stand up before I could even go to the toilet. So uh, it was just a tough time. And I found this pain clinic and... Um, to get there it was an hour and a half drive each way. Um, fortunately, I got a very comfortable car uh, with automatic um, transmission. So my, my main disability, as it were, was down my left leg rather than my right one. So I checked I could brake hard enough to stop the car properly. Uh, but it also had incredibly light steering. So you could almost turn a bit like an American one. You can turn it with, a, yeah. um, with your finger. 
So it was actually quite easy to drive uh, and I could see enough. Uh, I made sure the mirrors were properly done and I wasn't a risk on the road. But um, it took me, uh, about after about a quarter of an hour, I really started to hurt. So I was about every 20 minutes, I was stopping on the journey just to have a, a good stretch out, walk around the car, flex a little bit and get back in. And as, as it was actually the, um, uh, the winter, uh, I found that the warmth of the body was, was, was what, just a lovely thing just to line my back against. <laughs> <laughs> so that was quite nice. But uh, on this pain clinic, uh, we were taught a whole range of things about body management. Mm. Um, and uh, I was still, you know, after not only clearing the pain, but getting have, having an active life. And their objective was firstly to start to get rid of the pain and secondly to, bring some, uh, to build some core strength so that you had strength around your spine. So it started to look after the core of you and protect your spine. And after three weeks, I was feeling a lot better. Um, I was still in a huge amount of pain. I was still on some painkillers, um, but I was starting to walk a bit easier um, and move around a little bit easier. So that was the start of uh, of my journey back to uh, to decent health. Yeah, I mean, as a back pain sufferer myself um, in the past, um, just relating to some of the things that you're saying there, like changing gear and, and things like that, because mm. uh, I wasn't fortunate enough to have you know, an automatic. Um, but it's the um, the issue for me was that my back would um, would lock up like you're saying crawling around the you know the floor i i had to do literally that or my um, lower mm -hmm. spine seemed to lock up and it used to happen probably about every six weeks or so and it would take mm -hmm. about two weeks to uh to kind of relax and start to get back to normal so that i could then start moving again only for it to go again about six weeks later yeah, so, yeah for me it, it was um it, you know, it stopped me doing so many things in life I wasn't mobile. I started to put on a lot of weight. Um, and the thing I think for me is that the, uh, the doctor had just sort of said to me, literally, it's wear and tear. It's not going to get any better. Just take the drugs when, when it, the pain gets uh, so bad. But it was actually quite a simple thing to fix. It only took an osteopath about five hours to put things back into place again and, and allow me to do things now like, uh, go for a 10k run in the same way that you've been able to people have looked at you and said you know you're one of the fittest people we know how do you fancy a track of the Himalayas um, so it, it's like I want people to understand from the conversation that we're having that sometimes um, what you're being told may not be the truth it, for you it may be that you can um, change yeah. the circumstances it may be you can fix this if you've got an open mind and you want mm. to try different things and pursue it, it can completely get you back to good health again. Um, mm. You mentioned that you have a book. Um, you, you mentioned that I, I beat back pain, um, so can you. That's the, the title of your book. Tell us a bit mm. about the book. Yeah, the, the book came about because um, I was at a business event, strange enough, and uh, at the end of day one, somebody said, uh, what breakthrough moments have you had during the course of today? And uh, the person next to me had heard my story because I'd moved from a corporate role into uh, freelance work. Mm. And uh, that was partly because of a change of lifestyle by choice uh, through what I was doing. And uh, they said, I need to, need, you need to get your book published. And I said, I haven't even written a book. And they said, well, you need to write a book. And it was quite strange that I was asked to actually just say a few minutes so, about about what what the issue was and strangely enough it took me about i don't know 90 seconds to say i've had back pain skipped five years told i'd never walk again probably be in a wheelchair by the age of 50 um and uh to prove everyone wrong i sorted myself out and took a group of people at base camp last mountain tibet and sat down uh feeling a bit embarrassed about all that little lot um and i got completely mobbed by people these are business people and they were saying well, I've got back pain or my mother's got back pain or my son's got back pain or, or my brother or sister or I said, what did you do? And I thought, well, what did I do? So I did a mind map and created a, a, the storyline of what mm -hmm. I'd, I'd actually done. And then it, ultimately that actually turned out to be the book I wrote. Um, and I just wrote the chapter. I've got a copy of here, which is, uh, yeah. which is this. And it's won four, back, uh, four book awards. 
um, so far. Um, and the story came about because of uh, a back problem. And what's in the book is just some of the things that I've done um, to actually, that I've thought about with, with the thing I did with, to, to get myself back into decent health. I've yeah. since done the three peaks and the three volcano challenges and all sorts of other stuff. So um, no, it's not as if the, uh, the Himalayan trip was a one-off. It wasn't. <laughs> There's been more since. Amazing. I mean, to think that, you know, it's an incredible story to think that, you know, here you are with um, five discs that are out. You're being told that you, you know, you, you may never walk again and then you fixed it without surgery and, and without, not just not without surgery, without the pain and the recovery and everything else that goes with that. And then you've gone on to walk the Himalayas and take other challenges as well. That's, that's an amazing story. Peter, I want to invite you to, uh, to leave us with a challenge or request. I like to ask people I'm interviewing this because um, it's great to hear your story and hear what you've done. But it's also nice to turn that into something practical that people can take away and do. So what would be your challenge or little quest that you would send people on having heard this? The one thing I'd add to what I've said already is that firstly, do involve your medical practitioner, but don't always listen to everything they say. Uh, take, take responsibility for your own health. But the one tip I'd add is actually um, just think about your posture. There's a lovely old fashioned word, which is deportment. Yeah. Um, but it, for me, it's about understanding your posture. So when you're walking down the road, don't look at a, a shop window to see what's in there or at yourself from a vanity point of view. Just see whether you're walking straight or whether you're stooped. Um, yeah. Think about when you're sitting, get it in a chair, get somebody who is, um, uh, give permission to someone to take a, a candid picture of you when you're working away and then let them share that picture of you when you're over your desk. And you might find the position, your, your posture is appalling. But because you're so involved with what you're doing, um, you don't realise it. And with the advent of mobile phones where everybody's walking down the street looking at them, there's that stooped mm. nature coming in. So uh, uh, coming in to be part of our way of living, really. So the, the tip I would say is think about your posture. Think about your posture and get other people who may live with you or know you just to give a gentle tap on your sort of um, you know, verbal shins, as it were, about... Um, about the posture they may be in and do the same for them as well because it's not unusual that people start to develop back pain through bad posture which may take a year or two or three to start to develop into back pain uh, it won't be that one little sudden thing that causes the back pain it's normally some unless you picked a, a bag of cement up or something uh, it's normally something that's been developing over a significant period of time and it's usually down to bad posture so true. Peter, thank you very much for your time um, and sharing this with us. We will add a link into the description below for your book so that people can go and get a copy of that. A nice little challenge there from Peter, just to check your alignment with your posture. Are you going to take Peter's challenge? I will be, and I'll be reporting it in my challenge roundup video that I put together each month. You can see my findings from this challenge in our challenge roundup video, which is a monthly summary covering all the challenges our experts shared. To get that video and all our latest health and wellness uploads, including interviews and reviews, subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified whenever we post. And if this channel can help your friends and family, please share it with them too. Also, if you want to get proactive with your health, Total Wellness Club are developing health quests over at questly.life. Join while we're developing the site and get access to health quests that immediately personalize your health. You'll get to identify which of 10 critical health categories need your attention. You'll be able to track your progress and you'll be able to help us develop the platform. I'll put a link in the description below and I'll see you in the next video.